The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Class 2 on Estimating and Advanced Parts. My name is Jace and I am well versed in the software. There are two ways that you can ask questions during today's webinar. You can click the raise your hand button or you can type that question in the chat and I will see it there. Today we will be venturing deeper into the capabilities of the software. For this class we will be covering the estimating tab as well as working with parts and assemblies to calculate material and labor costs. Then we will dive into the templates tab and build a custom database of parts and assemblies from scratch. So first off, I'd just like to show you real quick, these are going to be the two takeoffs that we'll be working with today. I've drawn these two. We have this area for the warehouse, and then we have this uh, linear down here for these interior walls. So we're going to be doing a example where we're going to be uh, pouring a concrete slab for this uh, building here, and then we're going to be uh, installing some drywall into these walls here. So that's going to be the two examples we'll be running with today, and we'll be uh, choosing our parts as such. So today we're going to be working out of the estimating tab, and that's here. It's kind of in the middle of our tabs, just to the right of the view tab. And once you open that up, you're going to get this view right here. And uh, this is uh, basically a summary of all the different uh, measurements you've done in your job so far. So it's every single takeoff that you've done, and it shows information about it. So you can see each row is one of those takeoffs, and then each column is a property or a, something describing that takeoff. So you can see here we have all of our measurements here in the quantity field, and then we have all of our costing information off to the right, and we'll get more into that in here in a second. So you can change some of the views here if uh, you would like to have different information displayed. You can click this columns button right here to change that view. So if we click on that, you can see here we get a list of all the different columns that we have available. So if there's some, some that you don't like or you don't like to have these displayed, they're not relevant to you, you can uncheck these boxes right here to make them go away. So I can get rid of description and color to save myself a little bit more room and condense my information down if I wanted to. Now additionally you can add your own custom fields to your item so if you have something that uh, you would like to have displayed on an item you can actually add it to that item. So if you'd like to do that you can right click on the item and click on properties. So we're right clicking on that item and clicking on properties and that's going to bring up the window that looks like when you first uh, created the takeoff item. So you can change some of these properties here but we're going to click on this advanced button which is in the left hand corner of that the bottom left hand corner of that window. So we're going to go ahead and click on that and you're going to get this view right here. Now this is the behind the scenes look at what is happening to make this takeoff item work. You're getting all the different calculations that are automatically happening for you. So we can go through here and scroll through this list of items to see if there's one that fits what we're looking for. So right here we have our division. Let's say we wanted to add a division to uh, one of our items. We can go ahead and type division 9 into there and add that uh, item. Now you can also add your own custom fields. So like if uh, this does not... Uh, or th this list of items does not have what you're looking for, it's something specific to your business, you can click this green plus button right here for add property to add your own custom property. We'll go over that a little bit more later on when we get into the advanced part side. So I'll go ahead and click OK to save that division 9, but you'll notice it's still not showing up here in this columns view, so we have to go in and add that column. So let's go back to our columns button right up here, it's in the middle of the estimating toolbar. We'll click on that, and then we're going to click this green plus button in the top left corner of that window. That's going to allow us to add this new column right here, and all we have to do is type in division. And one thing to make sure is that you spell it correctly, because if you don't spell it correctly, it's not going to show up. So make sure that you double check your spelling when you type this in. And when you close it out, you'll see we have our division column off to the right here, and we have division 9, which we added manually there. So you can, that's an easy way to add your own custom views and uh, get information that you want to have displayed by using this columns button. Now we also have estimating layouts that you can use. That's off here to the left hand side of the window. That's this estimating layouts pane here. We're on the default view right now, but you can see we have a couple of plan swift layouts that we've provided as default for you. So if you open that up, hitting that plus button, you can see the list of all the different types of uh, views that we have for you. So we have one that's uh, focused on waste percentage. So if you click on that, you'll see that the uh, layout has changed to show waste percentage up front. If you wanted to get like wall area, you can open that one up and you can see we have information that's displayed specifically for walls. So if that, that's something that you're working with frequently, you can just get that view very quickly. And so we have a couple of these saved for you, but you can create your own by just clicking this plus button right here. And once you've arranged the, your columns the way you'd like, you can just hit that save button right there to save it as its own uh, layout. So you can switch easily between information that you'd like to see. 
All right, we also have the ability to print this view if you'd like. Um, so if you click on this print button right here, you can print out this uh, layout right here. You'll just get a spreadsheet of this information. You can also export this directly to Excel. So if you like to perform your own calculations out in Excel, all you have to do is click Export to Excel right here, and it's going to export this uh, table out to Excel for you. So you can see here we've got that sheet now in Excel, and it's pulled up automatically for us. All right, so another couple things to show you in this view is you can actually create the uh, folder structure by using this new folder button right here. It's in the top left hand corner. It's the first button on the estimating tab. That basically just allows you to organize your takeoffs if you'd like to group them by different categories. So you can see here we have that already defaulted with the sample plan takeoffs. So you can see I can collapse that folder down and I can collapse the residential plan takeoffs. And by the way, these two are going to be the only ones that we're going to be working with today, this warehouse and interior walls takeoff. The rest of these are part of the sample plan takeoff, that default plan that you see when you first open up Plan Swift. So we're not going to be dealing with these ones. We're only going to be dealing with these two underneath the residential plan takeoffs folder. All right, so let's go ahead and dig into parts and assemblies. So let's start with parts. And parts are stored calculations in the program that work with data generated by takeoff items to determine the amount of building materials needed, the cost of those materials, the labor cost to install those materials, and so on. So basically, a part is just a saved calculation that's going to apply automatically for you. And that's going to be over here off to the right in our templates and inputs pane. So you can see off to the right we have this pane right here. And we're going to look for the parts and assemblies drop down. So you can see we're on sample takeoff templates right here on the top right hand side. So we're going to drop this list down and choose parts and assemblies. We don't cover takeoff templates in the uh, in this webinar, so uh, but just so you know, they are there. All right, so we go ahead and open up the parts and assemblies here, and then we'll open up the folder for parts. And you can see here we have these uh, divided out into different categories. So we have equipment parts, labor parts, material parts, and subcontractor parts. So we'll go ahead and let's do a concrete slab for our warehouse uh, area right here. So we'll go ahead and do a material parts here. And then we have them further broken out by division and uh, trade, so you can uh, easily find what you're looking for. So we're going to do a concrete slab, so we're going to do concrete, and we'll open that up hitting the plus icon. Let me expand this to get a little bit better uh, view. And then here we have the concrete area takeoffs, and this is the one we want because we're dealing with an area takeoff. So we'll just go ahead and open that one up, and you can see all the different parts that we have saved uh, underneath concrete. Now all of these parts are pre-provided by PlanSwift, so everybody's going to have the same parts. Um, and you can use most of these to fit uh, your needs, but we'll go over how to create your own uh, from scratch here in a minute. So all we'll do is just go ahead and click and drag this concrete slab over, and you can also see that it's priced per cubic yard. So that's how we know how we're going to be pricing this out, is we're going to be paying per cubic yard. So we'll go ahead and click and drag that over and drop it right here onto Warehouse. And once we drop it on, it's going to give us this window to allow us to change some of the properties. So we can increase the thickness if we'd want. So uh, if we're doing like a 6-inch thick slab, we can change that. We have our waste percentage, so we can estimate 10% over. Or if we wanted to change that up, we can do like 15%. Uh, you can also type in your own uh, value here if you'd like. If it doesn't, uh, if the value you want is not in this dropdown, you can actually type in your own value. So let's say we want 15.5% extra waste percentage. We can type that in and that still works. Here in the cost each, we're going to put how much it's going to cost us per cubic yard. And that's where uh, looking in this parentheses right here is really important. We want to know exactly how we're pricing this out. So that's why we put here in cubic yards. We need to put what our price is per cubic yard. So uh, that, let's just go as an example. Let's say it's $50 per cubic yard. I have no idea if that's an accurate example, but we'll just go with that. And then we can also mark that up uh, by a percentage in case we want to mark that up to our customer. So this could be like our actual costs, and then we'll just mark that up uh, by 10% to the customer. So they're paying uh, uh, $55. So once we're ready, we'll go ahead and click OK, and that's going to apply that calculation. You can see it's applied, but you, you don't actually see any change in the price information on here. And that's because you have to open up that takeoff item to see it underneath it. So you can see I clicked that plus icon to the left of the warehouse item, and we have our concrete slab item. You can see how many cubic yards it's going to take us. It's automatically calculated out how many it's going to take us. So it's going to be about 41 uh, cubic yards. Here's the cost that we put in. So it's fi or $50 per cubic yard. And then here's what the cost total is going to be at $50 per cubic yard. And then at our markup percentage of 10 or 
10%, it's going to cost them $55 per cubic yard, and here's what we should charge to our customer. And you can see we've already uh, broken out the division there automatically for you. So that's a very quick and easy way to get your, uh, your material quantities and your costing information all just by applying a pre-saved part. Let's do another example. Let's do a drywall example. So I'm going to go ahead and close out my concrete folder. And then we'll just open up our drywall one down here. And since we're dealing with the linear takeoff for our interior walls, we'll go ahead and open up the linear and segment takeoffs. And you can see all the different items we have underneath here. So I'll go ahead and uh, do the 5 8 inch drywall priced each. And I'll just click and drag that over to my interior walls and let it go there. And now I have all these properties that I can change. So let's say I'm uh, doing 10 foot wall heights and we're installing both wall sides. So we want to make sure we double that area and then width and length for our sheet width and length. So that way uh, we know how many sheets it's going to take us. And here's all of our costing information down here. Now, one more thing to note is that even if uh, one of these parts doesn't fit exactly what your needs are, you can change it just a little bit to fit your needs. So let's say we're not doing 5 8 inch drywall, we're just doing half inch drywall. I can actually change that description. So you can see I can type in one half inch here. And there we go, we've got that uh, part, it's half inch drywall, and it's still going to calculate all out the same for us. So if you have a part it over here in our uh, templates that pretty closely fits what you're using, you can just tweak it just a little bit to fit your needs. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And now we have that part applied to our takeoff item. I can open up that view here. You can see it's going to take us 60 sheets, and here's all of the costing information that it, caught, uh, it calculated out for us. Now one thing to note is we changed that half inch drywall here. And you can see if I right click and hit properties, we've got all of those uh, changes that we made. We have 10 feet, we have two wall sides. But back over here on the templates side, it's still at 5 8 inch drywall and none of those defaults have changed. They're still going to be the exact same thing every time we apply that part. And I'll show you that real quick just by clicking and dragging it over you can see it's still at eight feet and one wall side. So if you once you apply it onto the estimating side, it's only going to be specific to that job. Everything over here in the templates and inputs is going to remain the same from job to job to job. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to assemblies. And assemblies are a group of parts that's applied to a common takeoff item that determines the amount and cost of materials and labor simultaneously. So basically, a assembly is just applying multiple parts at the same time. It's just a bucket that contains all of those parts. So let's go ahead and close out our parts folder and open up the assemblies folder. And we just want the assemblies drag and drop right here. And we'll do the area takeoffs for our concrete slab assembly. And you can see right there we have this concrete slab assembly. And if I open that up, you can see all the parts that are contained underneath it. So we have the concrete slab, we have the aggregate base, we have the welded wire, total labor, and the vapor barrier all five of those parts are going to be applied at once instead of finding each one of those individually and applying them. So let me just delete this old uh, part so we don't get it confused. So I'm just going to click on it and hit delete on my keyboard and press yes. That gets rid of that old takeoff item. And now all I have to do is click and drag that assembly over and drop it right onto the warehouse item. Now it may take a second to load this one just because it's doing all those calculations behind the scenes for you. So give it just a second if it takes a little bit to load. And now you can see we have that window that pops up and we're able to change all of these parameters all in one go. So you can see I can change my thickness if I need to. I can change all these properties on each one of these items individually, but they're all in one window for me. So it's really convenient. Now, once I'm ready, I can go ahead and click OK. And now we have this assembly that's applied on our takeoff item. And I can open that up to see all of our costing information. You can see all of the material quantities it's going to take us. Here's all of our costing information and what it's going to cost uh, the customer, what we should charge to the customer. So assemblies are really easy. They're just a group of parts that you're applying all at once. All right, so that's pretty much it for the estimating tab. It's really easy. All you have to do is click and drag your items over, and that's going to apply that saved calculation on there for you. So let's get into creating your own custom parts and assemblies. We're going to go in and create our own from scratch. So first off, I just want to show you the easiest way to create your own template. And that's just by copying something you've already done. So let's say this half inch drywall is something we're going to be doing a lot. We want to default that value. We want this to uh, be our default. So I can right click and hit properties. I always want to use 10 foot wall height. I always want to do two wall sides. Let's say that's what we're doing all the time for our jobs. And we don't want to change that every single time. So I'll go ahead and click OK. 
and we're just going to copy this into a template. So I'm just going to right click on that item and hit copy. And now we've copied this part right here. We're just going to go over to our templates tab, which is right in here, here in the center of all of our tabs. And uh, you'll probably see this view first right here. We're going to go here to our parts and assemblies sub tab right here, which you can see these correlate to the templates tab on the right hand side. And we're just going to right click and hit paste to paste that item in here. So you can see we have the half inch drywall priced each. It showed up here. We can organize it into the folders later, but just to show you how that works, now I can go back to my estimating tab and you can see here we have that half inch drywall that showed up right here and I can click and drag that over onto our interior walls and you can see it saved all of that information. It's that half inch drywall. We have 10 foot wall heights and two uh, wall sides. So that's automatically saving that for us so we don't have to change it every single time. And you can do that with your costing information as well. All right, so let's head back to the templates tab here. And let's go ahead and create our own uh, separate custom tab that is separate from the preset parts and assemblies that are provided by PlanSwift. So I'll go ahead and click this new tab button right here. It's in the very center of our toolbar to create this new tab. And we'll just call this one custom and click OK. And now we have this uh, tab here that's empty. And we know these are all going to be specific to our business. These aren't the templates that are provided by PlanSwift. These ones are ones that we created ourselves. And they are specific to our business. All right, so let's go over a couple of the items on this toolbar before we get into creating a new part. So this uh, first button right here is for a new folder. This allows you to create a folder hierarchy, kind of like we have here in the parts and assemblies sub tab. So you can see we, you can divide these out however you'd like, whatever makes sense for your business. And then you can just use these adjust arrows off to the right to adjust the, them into folders however you need. And I'll show you how to do that a little bit later on. This new item button right here is basically one of the building blocks of our uh, program. It's not really used that often, so don't worry about this one. It's 99% of the time you're not going to use it. So, But just so you know, uh, it is there. We have the new area, linear segment, and count buttons right here, which are takeoff templates. We don't cover those in the webinar, but just so you know, those are here. Uh, you can use them. New assembly we'll cover in just a minute, and we'll go ahead and start on creating a new part. So I'm going to click the bottom half of this button, and you can see all the different types of parts that we have available. So we have sub-item, equipment, labor, material, other, and subcontract. So let's go ahead and create a material part. We're going to just recreate our uh, drywall example from scratch. All right. So now we get this window right here. We can give it a name. So I'm going to go ahead and call this one uh, drywall. And we always want to put how it's priced out. So we want to put in parentheses priced. And I'm going to do each. And this lets us know that we're pricing this out per sheet. And it's really important to do this so that way you know what your quantities are. If it's uh, per sheet of drywall, if it's per square foot, if it's per hour. However you're pricing it out, you'll know exactly how it's uh, being priced when you apply it to that item. So that's why you always want to make sure to put in parentheses how it's being priced out. So I'll go ahead and click on the advanced view. And you may have remembered this from a little bit earlier. This is the behind the scenes look at this part to see all the different calculations that are happening to make this work. And so you can see all these right here are the ones that we provide for you. These all automatically happen. And this is what happens to calculate out uh, your costing information. So that's all going to happen automatically for you. The only thing you need to do is fill out in the quantity field how to figure out your material quantities. We'll do that here in a second. But just realize that this quantity field right here is what we're going to be focusing on and where we're going to be building our equation. All right, so we have a bunch of different information here that we can use. We have our takeoff data down here, so we can use this information here to pull out those measurements and automatically bring them into our equation. So we're going to use those here in a second. And you have all of your different fields down here that you can scroll through and use as well. So we're going to build out our equation to figure out how many sheets of drywall it's going to take us to do our job. So what we need to do is we need to calculate out what our total wall area is, and then we need to divide that by our total sheet area. So we can build that out here in the quantity field, but first we need to figure out, or we need to build out those variables that we need to have. So let's go ahead and click this green plus button to add a property. It's the first button on this toolbar. And this allows us to create our own custom property. So the first one we need is wall height. We're already going to have the wall length because that's the measurement that we did here for linear total. So we're just going to do our wall height here. 
and we're going to uh, over here in this big white box we can create a drop down list of some default values to use so let's say the default uh, or sorry the, the primary uh, wall heights that we use are 8 9 10 11 and 12 so let's say those are our most common wall heights and we want to use those so we can go ahead and click OK and now we have our wall height property right here. And if I use this drop down, you can see we have 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Now we can still type in our own custom values. Let's say we use a 10 and a half foot wall height. We can go ahead and type 10.5 and it's going to accept that. All right, so let's go ahead and build out our next property. So we'll go ahead and click that, that green plus button again. And for this one, we need number of wall sides because if we're going to be doing two wall sides, we want to be able to double that uh, area. So then here we're just going to type 1 and 2 because those are going to be our only options. We can only have either 1 or 2 wall sides. There can't be 3 wall sides. There can't be 2,000 wall sides. So we want to be able to only choose 1 or 2. So that's what we're going to do here to check this box. That says only allow choosing from the list. This means that you can only choose what's in this box, either 1 or 2. You can't type 1.5 in. You can't type 2,000 in. It's only going to be those two. And that's important for us because if we accidentally type 2,000, in there it's really going to mess up our calculation so we'll go ahead and click OK and now we have our number of wall sides so now we have all the information we need to figure out our wall area we just need to figure out what our sheet area is so I'll go ahead and add properties for that we'll just do sheet width oops width click OK and sheet height and I can default some values in here if I wanted to but I'm gonna uh, just leave them blank to save some time all right, so now we have all the different variables that we need. So it's important to go in and default some of these values to save you time later. So that way you don't have to cho choose these variables every single time. So let's go ahead and choose our wall height. Let's say we deal primarily with 10 foot wall heights and we're primarily installing both sides. Let's say that most of our work, we're doing both wall sides. And then uh, for the sheet width and height, we can say we always buy four by 12 sheets. So we'll just go ahead and put four by 12 in there. Now we need to set our input and output units. So you can see up here we have the input units and then the output units. So if we click in this box right here, we can go ahead and select what the input units are. So we can do feet right here, and you can see that defaults at the feet over there. Number of wall sides is a quantity, so we'll leave that blank. And then sheet width and height, they're in feet as well. So we'll go ahead and choose those. Now it's important to choose these because if you ever do any conversions, PlanSwift's going to be able to handle that automatically for you as long as it's a standard unit. So if you're going from feet to inches, PlanSwift will automatically convert that for you as long as you have your input and output units set correctly. All right, so our last step on these variables is to check these boxes off to the right-hand side. So we're going to check each one of these. And what this does is it allows us to change those when we apply the part. So if I click this input view, it's the very bottom left corner button. This is going to be what it looks like when you apply that part to a takeoff item. So you can see here's all the variables we'll be able to change when we apply that part. So now I can go back to my advanced view, and so like let's say I forgot to check my wall height right here. You can see that no longer shows up here, and I won't be able to change it every single time. So that's why it's important to make sure that you check these boxes for uh, off to the right of your items, so that way you can change them on the fly. Now the last two I recommend checking are your cost each and markup percentages. This is going to automatically calculate out your cost. So let's say that uh, each sheet of sheetrock costs you about $45 and you're going to mark that up by 10% to your customer. No idea if those are accurate examples, but we're just going to go with those numbers. So now when we go to our input view, you can see we have those values defaulted here, so that way if our uh, costs ever change for the sheetrock, we can change that as we need to. All right, so we've done all of the things we need to do to prep for this quantity field, so we're ready to go ahead and build out our equation. And basically, we're just going to be building out how to figure out how many materials it's going to take us to do this job. So that's just going to be our total wall area divided by our sheet area to figure out how many sheets it's going to take. So let's go ahead and bring up our linear total. This is going to be the total length of the walls that we drew. So we'll click and drag that up and just drop it right here in the quantity field and you can see we have linear total. Now we need to multiply that by our height. So it's just length times height. So we'll click and drag the wall height up. And I'm just using the multiplication symbol right here in the top of this toolbar. This is where you can get all of your operators. And the last thing I need to do is multiply that by our total wall area because, or sorry, by our uh, number of wall sides because if that doubles, we want to uh, make sure that that automatically is handled there. 
Okay, so we've got our total wall area, and we just need to make sure that that gets calculated out first. So if you click this set of parentheses right here, you can apply a parentheses to both sides of the equation. So we'll just click that and click the first plain set of parentheses. And you can see we have a parenthesis added to each side of the equation. So that's all going to be calculated out first. Now we're just going to divide that. So hit the division symbol right here. Or you can type that in on your keyboard. And divide that by our total sheet area. So we'll just go ahead and open up a new set of parentheses. And then bring our sheet width up. Click and drag it. And then multiply that by our sheet height. Click and drag that up. And close that set of parentheses. And we're done. We have figured out exactly how many sheets of sheetrock it's going to take us to do this job. And we can uh, close this out from here if we wanted to. Now one extra thing that you can do is you can actually add a special uh, equation to this. So we'll go ahead and click on that set of parentheses again. And this time we're going to choose round up. And what that does is it applies a round up equation to the entire uh, to the entire equation. So you can see here at the very beginning it says round up. And what that means is anytime you get a decimal, it's going to round up to the nearest whole number. So if we get 4.5 for our answer, it's going to round up to 5. If we get 4.05, it's going to round up to 5 because we can't buy a uh, fraction of a sheet. So we always want to make sure we round up to know exactly how many sheets we need to buy. All right, so now we're done, we can go ahead and click OK. We have this part that we just built from scratch. You can see we have drywall priced each, and we can apply that as a part to our estimating tab. So let's go back to the estimating tab here and show you that in action. I'm just going to delete this old one so we don't get it confused. And we're going to go here to the templates and inputs pane, and you're going to go and click this drop down list and go to our new custom tab. So you remember we created that to have our own uh, list of parts that are specific to our business. So we'll click on that. You can see we have our drywall priced each right here, which has just shown up. And I can click and drag that over to the interior walls and drop it there. You can see all those properties have shown up that we saved. So we have our cost each. We have our wall height, which we defaulted to 10, and the rest that we have saved there. So now I can go ahead and click OK. And you can see it's calculated that all out automatically for us. It's going to take us 55 sheets. Here's our costing information. And it's calculated that all automatically out for us. All right, so I'll go ahead and create another template. Let's go ahead and do this one a little bit more quickly. It'll be a very similar process. Let's do another material part. So I'm going to click the bottom half of the new part and do another material part. And we'll do this one as the uh, drywall mud. And again, we want to put in parentheses how we're pricing this out. So I'm going to do priced each again because we're going to do this one priced per bucket. So I'll go ahead and click on the advanced view to get that behind the scenes look. And again, we're going to be focusing on the quantity field right here. So let's build out all of our properties again that we'll need. So we need to figure out our total wall area again and divide that by how much square footage a bucket covers. So we'll go ahead and click the green plus button. We're going to do our wall height. We're going to do 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 here in this box. That way we get the list of items to choose from. Click OK. We're going to add another property for a number of wall sides. And we only want one or two for this list. So we're going to check that box to make sure we can only choose one or two. And now the last property we need is our material coverage. This is how many square feet a bucket of uh, drywall mud is going to cover. Okay, so let's default some of these values to save us time in the future. So we'll go ahead and do 10 foot wall height, two wall sides, and let's say a bucket can cover 500 square feet. So let's set our uh, input and output units from here. Wall height is in feet. Number of wall sides is a quantity, so we'll leave that blank. And material coverage is in square feet. Okay, last thing to do is check these boxes off to the right to make sure that we can change those in the input view. So you can see they're showing up there. And we can also uh, check that for the uh, cost each and markup percentage. And let's say it costs us $50 a bucket, and we're going to mark that up by 15%. Okay. Now from here we can go ahead and uh, build out our equation into the quantity field right here. So let's go ahead and bring up our linear total for the length of the wall. Multiply that by the uh, wall height. Click and drag that up. Multiply that by the number of wall sides. Wrap that in a set of parentheses and divide it by the material coverage. And there we go, we figured out exactly how many buckets of drywall mud it's going to take us to do this job, and all the costing information is going to be handled automatically for us. 
So it may look a little bit intimidating to build these parts from scratch, but just keep in mind, if you're doing this by hand or if you're doing it in Excel, you can do it in Plan Swift. It's the exact same process. You're just building out that equation into the quantity field. So this is the same process you're doing on paper. You're taking the length times the height times the number of wall sides and dividing that by your total sheet area. And you're just building that equation out here into the quantity field and then the rest of the costing information is being handled automatically for you. So let's run through one last part real quickly and I'll do this one even more fast. And we'll do this one here for labor. We're gonna do how much uh, it's gonna cost us in labor to do this one. So I'm just gonna call this one drywall labor. And I'm gonna price, price this one out per hour. Okay, now I'm going to open up my advanced view, and this one's going to be almost identical to the last one. We're going to get our total wall area, so we'll need wall height. We're going to do 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. We're going to get our number of wall sides. We're going to do 1 and 2, and only allow choosing from the list. And then we're going to do our coverage per hour. Okay, so let's default some of those values. We're gonna do our 10 foot wall height, two wall sides, and let's say our crew can cover 300 square feet per hour. Probably really unrealistic, but we'll go with that. And this one's in square feet, so we're gonna set that. Wall height is in feet, and number of wall sides is quantity, so we'll leave that blank. We're gonna check these boxes off to the right to make sure that they show up when we do our input view, and I'll do the cost each as well. Let's say it costs our crew $10 per hour. Okay, so we'll go ahead and build out into our quantity field how we're going to figure that out, how many hours is it going to take the crew to do the job. So we'll go ahead and uh, click and drag up our linear total again for the wall length, multiply that by the wall height, multiply that by the number of wall sides, wrap that in a set of parentheses, and divide that by our coverage per hour. So we get our total wall square footage and divide that by however many square feet they can do per hour. Okay, and when we're done, we can click OK and we've got our drywall labor part that is price per hour. All right, so let's go ahead and build these all into an assembly. Let's say that these are gonna be the parts we use every single time we do a drywall installation. So we want to make sure that we're applying those every single time. So let's go ahead and click on the new assembly button and we'll call this one drywall assembly, or sorry, drywall installation. Click OK, and we're done. We've created that assembly. That's as easy as it is. The last step is to just make sure that these are all underneath that assembly. So you can see right here, the assembly is just kind of on its own. It does not have any parts underneath it. So what we need to do is position it on top of the parts we want to go underneath it. So we can just click and drag it up, and see we've moved it to the top, or you can click these adjust arrows to move it up or down. Now that we've got it there, we can click and or we need to highlight all the parts that are going to go underneath it. So we can click the bottom one, hold down the shift key on your keyboard and click the top one and that puts that selects all of the parts in between. So if you have 10 parts, you can just do that same method and it's going to select all the parts in between and you're just going to click the right adjust arrow here to move them underneath that assembly. So that's the right adjust arrow to move them right. And now you can see when we open that up, all of those parts are underneath it, and we can apply those all at once in an assembly. So let's show that in action. Let's go to our estimating tab here, and I'm going to remove this old part just so we don't get it confused. So now what you can see over here on our templates and inputs pane, we have our new drywall installation assembly. I can open that up, and we'll click and drag that over onto the interior walls. And uh, once that pops up, it's going to do all those calculations for us. So you can see here's all of our properties, we can click OK, and now when we open that up, we have all of our quantities calculated out for us. All right, so that's pretty much it for creating your own custom uh, custom parts and assemblies. Now you may have noticed over here in the assemblies tab, we don't have very many example assemblies for you. Uh, we only have concrete slab and roofing assembly, and the reason for that is that uh, these are kind of just examples. Uh, we want we kind of leave it up to you guys to create your own uh, custom assemblies because every company is different. They're going to have different ways that you do your jobs. So we don't want to have one that uh, works for everybody. We want you guys to create your own. So the easiest way to do this is just to go in and find the parts that work for your business and copy them over into the assembly. So let's say we're going to be doing uh, some more concrete stuff 
and we want to just change some of this information slightly. So we can just copy this concrete slab one right here. Just right click and hit copy. And then go back over to our custom tab and right click and paste. And now we have that over here and we can go in and edit that, change anything we need to. Or you can go into the advanced view and change any of these formulas the way you need to. And uh, then move them into your own assembly. So you can create this assembly. Let's say this one's going to go under this assembly, for example. I can just hit right. And now that that uh, concrete slab is in that assembly, I'll hit left to bring it back out of that assembly. All right, so that's pretty much it on how to create your own uh, parts. The easiest way is just to copy something that works pretty closely from our templates and then just alter it. But you can also create them from scratch if you need to. Now, chances are you're going to be spending a lot of time creating your own custom database of parts and assemblies. It takes a little bit of time to get it set up up front, but it's going to save you a lot of time in the long run because you'll be able to apply all of your own custom parts and equations automatically. So to save all this information and make sure you don't lose it, you can export this entire tab out to save it. So we'll go ahead and click this export tab button right here. And that's going to allow you to save it into a file. So you can see it brings up this window right here and you can save it. I'll just call this one custom and hit save. And now we've saved that to its own external file. I can email that to somebody or I can store it externally and uh, we'll have that saved for later. So like let's say uh, your computer crashes and dies and you lose all of your uh, custom database. So I'll delete this to pretend that we did that. Or you can share this with a coworker so that way everybody has the same custom database of parts and assemblies. So we can go ahead and click import tab right here and then find that file which is right there for me. I'll click OK, open that up and now we have our custom tab that's back and then we have all that same information underneath it. So this is a great way to back up your own uh, database of custom parts and assemblies and to share them with coworkers so that way they all have the same database of parts and assemblies. Okay, so that's pretty much it for today's uh, webinar. I'm going to go ahead and open it up for questions at this time. So if you have a question, type it into the chat box or click the raise your hand button and I can unmute you. And I'll give just a couple minutes for any of those questions to come in. All right, so I haven't seen any questions come in yet, so while we're waiting for any of those to be typed in, I'm just going to wrap up quickly. Today we covered the estimating tab and worked with parts and assemblies to estimate material and labor costs. We then dove into the templates tab and built our own custom database of parts and assemblies. You're welcome to come back and fill if you... F uh, Sorry, you're welcome to come back if you feel that this information was covered too quickly. These sessions do repeat weekly, so we have another session next week at the same time on Tuesday at uh, 11 p.m. or sorry, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, and we also have them on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Though Thursday's class was canceled this week. Uh, keep in mind this webinar is just a general overview. If you need trade-specific one-on-one assistance, we do have training packages that are available. And these trainings are super awesome. They're going to sit you down with one of our estimators, and you're going to get three hours of dedicated one-on-one -on -one time with one of them. So you're going to only learn what you need to know. Uh, they're not going to teach you on anything that you already know. So, for example, they're not going to teach you anything that you've learned in this webinar already. They're going to tailor that training to what you would like to know. So they're going to focus it on your trade and what you would like to know. Um, and by attending today's webinar, you can get a 10% discount off the cost of that training. So just by attending today, you can get 10% off of that training if you'd like to do so. To schedule that training, you can go here to the Help tab and just call our general line, which is 888-752-6794. Dial extension 1 for our uh, account representative to get that training booked. And then 2 for tech support if you have any specific questions. Okay, so it doesn't look like I have any questions at this time. Uh, if you are typing a question right now, click that raise your hand button real fast so I don't cut you off.
Okay, so it doesn't look like I have any questions today, so I'll go ahead and end today's webinar. Thank you everyone so much for attending. I hope you have a great day.